that aren't as large and you have to gauge down from that as well. And you have a couple of double, like a couple of performances now in Opperman for like the same, isn't, it's, isn't a couple mm -hmm. of performances We have a couple, year? yeah, we have um, two performances of Rennie Harris in um, Smith Victor, beautiful dance theater at FSU campus. And we're doing two shows of uh, Richard Stoltzman, one in Opperman and one of, up in Thomasville at Pebble Hill. So, you know, you move people around, that, that helps artists too. It helps expose new audiences. I also think moving, that's another thing about moving to different venues, I do think you get different audiences. I think we've got a different audience at um, Bethel than we had before, and that year we had Ricky Skaggs at the um, uh, Christian Heritage Church, and I think we got a different audience coming to that as well. So I think it's helped us be more flexible these two years on the road. Uh, going from a different place every, to a different place every night really gets you fit as far as preparing and I think it's mm -hmm. really been helpful to me and I think we will will appreciate Ruby Diamond that much more when we get in but I don't think once we get into Ruby Diamond it's the end of these collaborations. I've been particularly happy with um, higher ed collaborations with TCC and FAMU. Um, we work with, the TCC is a great sponsor for many years and we've uh, struck up something with FAMU doing a performance there and that's just been fabulous. I don't know of too many other uh, programs that where all three institutions of higher learning locally uh, collaborate so uh, happily yeah, and I think the, that's what the arts can do. Now how are the students working with the collaboration and the going to different colleges? I remember when I was in school we pretty much stayed on campus and we never mm -hmm. really went too far outside of it. So are students going to all the different uh, uh, venues as well? I would say uh, definitely yes. Um, of course there are some limitations with transportation that I've come across. This includes, um, we have a lot of students doing volunteering, so it's another way that we get them involved. Um, with the volunteering they can actually uh, come and be a part of the show and see how we run and um, see some of the show as well and so they they will they're always willing to travel to these other venues and they know that um, Turner Auditorium for instance at TCC is a fantastic place um, and from a musician standpoint uh, the acoustics sound fantastic there and so you, there's always um, great shows going on and so they're always willing to travel and I've never actually heard anything negative from students about it. I think mm -hmm. master classes help with that too. If, if you get somebody that teaches you that afternoon, mm -hmm. you're inspired to go wherever they're going to be. Yeah. You, you definitely want to continue that connection so you'll go to the performance. Now when Ruby Diamond is up and, when, when is Ruby Diamond going to be up and running? Have you heard? I am not the final authority on that. I can tell you what I've heard, <laughs> but it's nothing that I would take to the bank. Okay. I have heard that um, performances will begin in um, November okay. of this year, of 2010. Um, but again, uh, I, I would wait to read it in the paper with a quote from Don Gibson, the Dean of the College of Music, before I actually went to the bank with it. Okay, when, uh, what are you looking forward to most about being back with Ruby Diamond? Well, um, several things. That's, wow, <laughs> so many. The first thing, I guess, is just having a home base uh, in the building. I think it'll make it logistics just become so much easier. That's one thing. Uh, not racing yeah. around each venue, um, which is cool, but it also not as good as having a big home base. The second thing is just being able to take part in a really amazing venue. Just having a great, world-class, top-notch uh, performance hall. I mean, it's just so thrilling to be able to, to run the, the festival out of that. I mean, like I said, I think that's going to be the calling card um, for this festival to become a nationwide uh, attraction for musicians. I really think that's going to be what puts it over the top. I think, from what I've seen of it, it's absolutely gorgeous and breathtaking. I think the community's going to be blown away. And I think the fact that I actually get it for 10 days to run a festival is like a, a gift from the heavens. So um, I'm, I'm all a Twitter about it. <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to continue our discussion about seven days of opening nights and the events that are going to be taking part in that. Uh, we'll be right back.
Welcome back to Issues in Education. I'm Suzanne Smith with Steve McQueen and Olivia Grover talking about seven days of opening nights. How is um, arts, or why is arts education so important to a college university? Oh, well, I think the uh, arts in general are, are vital to the community, to all communities. I mean, the, um, what makes human beings so great is creative impulse. We all have this creativity, and the arts are creativity made manifest. It's just something so vital to, to our humanity and to every society we build. I think uh, to encourage that on the college level is, is amazing, and I think FSU has a, a long-standing commitment to the arts, and, and the fabulous College of Music has been around for 100 years, um, and the theater and dance, just great arts contributions they make. Um, so they're so vital to this campus, it's part of our identity. And I think uh, this festival helps cement that in the community. I think a lot of times maybe we keep things inside the walls and don't get out there. I think Seven Days' valuable role um, is, to, is to invite the community to FSU to see how much the arts is a part of our life and try to share it. I really think Seven Days is an engine to make Tallahassee a better place to live, a better community, in that it, uh, by doing all those things, by, by showing that this Tallahassee has a commitment to the arts, to arts education, and to that um, vibrant life of its own community. Olivia, is this what attracted you to Florida State? Oh, definitely. Um, I, I'm originally from Miami, and we have a pretty lively arts scene there. And for me, growing up, I've always grown up in the arts. Um, so I find the opportunity as a young student and as a young child when I first begun, um, being able to have these opportunities are so important. This is what started me on my track. Uh, so, and it's really invaluable and it plays a huge role in my life. So I always find that what we do in offering all of these programs to students and um, young students, middle school students, elementary school, and other ages, it's really invaluable. It's definitely invaluable. And we also try to do um, adult education as well. We reach out to a lot of um, um, adult living communities and uh, it really puts a value on what we do and in their lives as well. And it, it, it really puts a value in the Tallahassee community. And I love being here because of it. Now, tell us about some of the events that are and acts that are coming to Tallahassee this year. Oh, we've got a pretty wide range. We're gonna open with a beautiful um, exhibit at the Museum of Fine Arts at FSU called In Company with Angels. Uh, it, the, the centerpiece is seven uh, stained glass windows by Lewis Comfort Tiffany that have been forgotten and lost in Cincinnati, locked away in, a, in crates because I, of I a demolition. And it's one of those things where somebody opens a box one day and goes, oh my gosh, check this out. <laughs> and it's these masterpieces and they're going to be hanging in the, it'll be like a cathedral when you walk in and see that. And all the other related art will be angelic in shape and form. Very excited about that one. Taj Mahal is going to open the performances at FAMU. That's uh, our collaboration with FAMU this year. He's a blues and world music pioneer. Jeffrey Gilmore's been here, this is his third year with the film school, bringing us a movie we haven't seen before, and we won't know what it is until he walks out and introduces so it. So you don't even know, I don't even know what it's about? I don't even know. I trust him. <laughs> I, trust him. <laughs> I don't think he's going to show any slasher or porno flicks. Or I think we're safe. He's, been, uh, he's shown us two great movies, and uh, I'm sure this year will be no different. Fiona Choir Boys, just 500 years, one of the most famous choirs in the world. Uh, Rennie Harris Peer Movement is a hip hop dance group. They're at the total cutting edge and at the the pinnacle, the pinnacle and the cutting edge. They are simultaneously uh, a day of dance. Mike Daisy is a, he's a little bit of a, a risky choice. He's a monologist, monologist from, <laughs> from New York. A um, little edgy. Um, I don't think he's played the Bible Belt before. I don't think he's played down south. But he, t he just sits behind a desk, much like this one, and talks for an hour and a half. And he has a lot to say about a lot of things. He's very funny, uh, very irreverent. Los Angeles Guitar Quartet, four phenomenal guitarists with a lot of world music. Marcus Roberts, jazz god. I think we take him for granted in this town. I think that's a shame. He, he, is, he does do a lot with, mm -hmm. with the university. Well, he lives here. He's on faculty. Uh, I think uh, coming out to see him perform once a year is one of the treats of living here, and I am just delighted to be able to play a part in it. I think he's a genius, and I think, I think history will remember him in the, in the jazz books. I mean, it's like having Charlie Parker live down the street or something. You shouldn't. It's not something you should overlook. Uh, Richard Stoltzman is going to come play a couple of shows with the faculty of Trio Solis, a faculty trio. Um, Eileen Ivers, the great Celtic fiddler, is going to play One Night at the Moon, and then we're going to close it out with Margaret Atwood, one of the one of the great writers of our time. Well, how have ticket sales been? Going? Ticket sales have been really strong. You know, you, you worry about the venues and the Away from Ruby Diamond and working and all that. They've been really strong. We have. Um, half a dozen sellouts already. Uh, I got to say a lot of this is all the, the reason we're able to put together a full festival in semi-dire times, that's no secret, 
is uh, we have the strong sponsorship, this base in the community of uh, local businesses and individuals, and they just step up and support this, and it's just, it's hard to even put into words what that means. I mean, even, even beyond the money, just the fact that uh, the group of individuals and businesses that do this, they're just so widely respected all over town, and that, that they put their weight behind it, talk about it, come to these performances, and make it known that this means something to them is even more valuable than the, than, than the money, though. I do love the money as well, but uh, that support is what has really allowed us to keep going at the same level. Um, so my hat's off to them. Now the, the funding, the money that is from the sponsorships and, and from ticket sales, where does that all go to? To me? <laughs> it goes to seven days. I mean, we turn it back over and we use it to build next year's festival. I mean, we pay, pay our bills and we try to set it up for next year. In addition to, I'd say also, um, trying to keep student prices low for their tickets. That's really important to us, um, that students have the opportunity, especially they're, they're being affected as well by uh, the economy and everything. So we really try to keep those prices low and offer the master classes Absolutely. to other audiences. We're moving, trying to move there also. The um, membership program that Seven Days have, what is that all about? It's about um, buying the ability to get your tickets earlier. It's about, and it's, but more than that, I mean, that's, that's the nuts and bolts of it, is if you, if you give us a check, you can buy your tickets earlier. It's about investing in the arts is what it's about to me. It's about um, helping to make this, helping to perpetuate this festival that we've created. Because as Olivia just pointed out, we're trying to make access a key. That's for students. That's for adults. We dropped our prices this year. We, we know that it's a, a tough year for a lot of people. Um, so the membership is about uh, investing back in that. And we've had, we have about 150 members that do that, and it, that's very helpful. Now, very quickly, how do people find out about the, the events and to get ticket information? They can go to our website, www.7daysfestival.org. Um, they can call the FSU Fine Arts Ticket Office at 644-6500 or they can go to the website tickets.fsu.edu. Wonderful. Thank you very much. That's our time for now. Please tune in again next month for more Issues in Education. You can watch the premiere episode of Issues in Education the first Wednesday of every month at 7.30 p.m. That means you can see the next new episode on Wednesday, March 3rd on WFSU TV. Join us as we discuss the latest developments in higher education happening around the state and across the country. If you have questions that you would like us to address on this program, you can email us at issues at wfsu.org. Again, that's issues at wfsu.org. If you'd like to see past episodes of Issues in Education, head to the President's website at www.president.fsu.edu.